I'm Romy Cordier, artist, author, and design expert, taking you on a journey through the world of art, architecture, and interior design. Today we're exploring all things op art. Imagine buying a mid-century home stuck in a southwestern time warp. Rope glued to the walls, sanded paint, a rust and turquoise color palette, orange saltillo tile, a pool that hasn't been used in years, remnants of a bygone era. An op art mural will be the icing on the cake in this updated home. The rehab was designed around a serene color palette of whites and grays with black accents. It included gray tile floors throughout, gray tiles cut into thirds and stacked in the master bathroom shower to reflect the vertical brick pattern in the fireplace, white cabinets in the kitchen and bathrooms, stainless steel appliances, new landscaping, a replastered pool, and a 100 foot long corrugated metal fence along with a new driveway. The overall theme was simplicity, which allowed the pool and mountain views to be the focal point of the home. Before putting the house up for sale, I wanted to create something completely unique that would make it easily identifiable on the MLS. I had recently been to the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York and was enthralled by the drawings of Saul Lewitt, namely wall drawing 370. If you can imagine, it was the length of two school buses. Op art is short for optical art or optical illusion art, created primarily in black and white. Time magazine coined the term in 1964, which makes it an ideal design springboard for this mid-century home built in 1958. The intersection of black and white lines, if done correctly, will create tension and movement, giving the viewer the impression of hidden images, flashing and vibrating patterns, or of swelling and warping. Follow along as I create this dynamic piece of wall art. So I'll start by making some markings on the wall and I'll talk to you about how to do that so we make sure we get this mirror both level and centered in the room. So well, let's get started. So on the wall, I'm gonna mark 39 inches here. I'm gonna start by putting these nails in so I have a place to start. Okay, let's measure this and see if we've got six feet here. Tie this onto the nail here. There we go. Try to hold that in place. And then what we'll do is we'll run a string to all four sides to make sure our square is actually a square. Okay, so from there, I ran a string from this corner to that corner, and then I ran one from that corner up to the corner up here. The reason I did this is because I wanted to find the perfect center of this rectangle, which is right here. We're gonna tie this on here, not too tight, because we wanna make sure that this will move around the nail as we are taking the pencil around. I'm gonna take this pencil and I'm gonna actually tie it to this. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move this pencil all the way around the rectangle to give us a perfect circle for the mural. I'm gonna do this kind of rough like a sketch and I'm trying to keep this pencil completely perpendicular to the wall so I keep my circle as perfect as possible. The nice thing about this also is because this is a mid-century home, there's very little texture on this wall, which makes it a lot easier. Let's see, is it gonna match up? It is, look at that. Perfect circle, pretty good, huh? Easy trick. Okay, so next step, I'm gonna take this blue painter's tape that I got at Home Depot, and I'm gonna outline the square of my mural. So now that I've got this in place, I'm gonna take smooth out the tape and here we go right with the nail all righty and then once, once I've got the square completed I'm actually going to take the string down perfect Okay, we're back. So here's what we did. Every two inches on this piece of tape, I made a mark. I did it at one foot, two foot, three foot, and four foot. So I had lines to go connect to horizontally to make sure that these stay completely level. Next step, we're gonna take an X-Acto knife and we're gonna cut away where the circle is that we drew earlier and we can see it through this blue painter's tape. So the trick to making this work is having a really sharp X-Acto knife and because this paint is fairly thin, you don't need to press too hard. 
Then I use the edge of the X-Acto knife and I lift this tape right off. So if you take a look at this mural and what we've got going on here, this is almost like a photographic negative. Everything that's dark is gonna be white and everything that's white is gonna be black. Some of the leading artists from the off-art movement are Bridget Riley, Victor Valsarelli, Carlos Cruz Diaz, Jesus Rafael Soto, and Jakob Agam. Here's a look at some more recent uses of off-art. Now that our circle is complete, we're gonna work on doing our vertical lines through the mural. So I marked one inch on either side of the pencil, and then every two inches, I do this all the way across, and I did it up again at 12 inches higher and 12 inches lower. This gives me a perfect grid to work from. So what I did earlier was I actually did a drawing to get a pretty good detailed idea of what this mirror will look like. So you can see the thick vertical lines and the thick horizontal lines and where they intersect is part of what's gonna create the circular shape here. So this is actually what I'm working from in the back of my mind while I'm actually working up here on the wall. So if you wanna come in and take a close look at this cut right here, because this line exists here, we don't wanna cut this little piece of corner off. We want that to stay there because this continues the line all the way through. We've got this line coming down, but it doesn't stop until it hits that circle. So it's gotta actually go beyond this piece here. If I cut this off, I'm gonna create a break in my circle. It's kinda of like cutting a jigsaw puzzle. There's lots of little bitty pieces to cut in here. But this is what's gonna make the mural really spectacular. down on that circular line and lift this little guy off and we should be done. All right, there we go. Okay, so now, easiest part of the mural, putting the paint on the wall. I've got bare paint from Home Depot, about a quart, because it's not gonna take a lot of paint for this mural. And the color is called Evening Hush, it's interior flat. The white paint on the wall is flat also, so I wanna keep the same sheen, which is no sheen on this mural. I've got a brand new painting tray, and I've got a very small roller brush. I don't want a lot of extra paint dripping around. And then for touch-ups, I've got this little chip brush also from Home Depot, and lastly, a wet sponge, just in case it drips. Here we go, I'm gonna pour this into the tray, and then stop and hit it with our brush. Keep that paint from dripping everywhere. Pretty clean, huh? We're gonna get some paint on our roller brush here. I'm gonna start with a small amount. I don't wanna oversaturate this. See how much paint we've got on there? It's not a lot, it's not dripping off. Ready? There we go. So you can see what I'm doing now. I'm rolling the paint on and I'm covering the tape. I don't have, the tape is here because they are my lines. The tape will come off in a little bit and I'm pressing very firmly on this roller brush and I keep going over it till I don't see any white of the wall underneath it. We're only gonna do one coat of paint on this, so it should be pretty easy and pretty simple. So while we're working on these vertical lines, we're gonna roll the paint on vertical also. When we do the horizontal lines, we'll roll the paint on horizontal. So the reason that I'm choosing to go with the tape is that I feel like I get the paint in closer to the edges of this. If I'm going up and down, over these horizontal lines, I may not get the paint right up to the edge of this line, and I want these lines really clean when I take the tape off. I've probably done about a dozen murals in my career, and I like murals because it's simply house paint. You know, I've said it before and I'll say it again, if you don't like it, you can paint over it. It's not for life. So, it's completely dry now and I am ready to take this tape off and show you guys this great op art mural that we've created. Ready? Here we go. So, this is the finished mural. There are some lines in here. I'm gonna go back with some white paint and touch up, but for the most part, you can see our composition. I think it's pretty cool. Now that we've completed the mural, take a look in the context of the finished room. While it makes a strong statement, it doesn't completely overwhelm the room. The black ceiling beam and black fireplace literally create a frame for the art when viewed from afar. The orange color accents bring the room to life and create an additional movement throughout the space. Something to keep in mind, if your design inspiration is off art, go easy on it. 
If you have a tile floor, a sofa, and a piece of art patterned with optical illusion finishes, the room could get a bit disorienting. Unless that's the vibe you're going for, in that case, have at it. Thank you.